Welcome back to the Spy X Family Comparison Series. Today we'll cover episode 4, the first episode to cover two chapters, chapter 4 and chapter 5. Unlike last episode, this one will be sort of a return to form canon-wise, and there's a lot to cover, so after the opening we start off immediately at the beginning of chapter 4 where Lloyd and his upper class family are getting ready for their interview, while Yor now does the extra step of checking Anya's attire as well. It would have been nice if the anime adapted this cold exit from the house, but instead they just silently leave the house while Lloyd talks to himself as always. Actually, these lines of his were said out loud in the manga, but it seems he's a bit too nervous for that this time. Can't say I blame him, they're about to reach the crux of Operation Strix, Eden Academy. While this shot doesn't probably display the entirety of the campus, its size still isn't to be trifled with. There are so many people that, by and large, most of them look completely different between the two versions. But even with the vast array of people, it still doesn't take long for Lloyd to realize that they're being watched. Lloyd is of course curious as to why this is, and in typical Twilight fashion, he starts mulling over his thoughts while his family is equally perplexed. These thoughts of his have been trimmed down a bit in the anime. He no longer says that this isn't just a curious gaze he feels, nor does he say that these people are amateurs. Which means it doesn't take him too long to find out where exactly these gazes are coming from. Seems like he's being observed from the high ground, where it looks like an additional person has been stationed in the bell tower for the anime version. Interestingly, Lloyd no longer mentions the guy with the radio like he does in the manga, instead going straight to his conclusion that they're being scored right now. These people really are ruthless in their scoring methods, and it's likely due to the strictness of Housemaster Henderson, who just walked into the room. This man can discern elegance from a mile away, so it makes sense that the forgers caught his eye. Already he's impressed with this mystery family, and it even leads him to review Anya's test score. I love Anya's answer to question one. Very funny, Anya. Now at the halfway point, families are being cordoned off, depending on whether they passed or not. Earlier when we first saw the instructors scoring the families, we heard them say that family Family A12 failed and Family G114 passed, and as we can see at the checkpoint, those two families are being directed accordingly. Must be pretty shocking thinking you're on the way to the interview, but you're instead being brought to the back door. Luckily, the Forger family was one of those that was looked upon favorably, and they can move on to the next phase of the exam. And that phase comes in the way of this kid stuck in the sewage drain. While this is clearly a trap of some sort, the Forger family is ready to take on the test that no other family dared to approach. Well, that's not entirely true. In the manga alone, there is another family that's willing to help, but after this kid flails around a bit more, they start to have second thoughts. Sorry guys, but a rope just won't cut it for this. To get things done, sometimes you have to get a little dirty. Seeing the forgers do as much is an act that the housemaster was both stunned and disappointed to see. And ordinarily this would have been enough to fail them, but never underestimate the preparative nature of the forgers as they get changed right in the middle of the street, an act that truly rocked Henderson to his elegant core. But he hasn't given up on his judgment yet, as he's convinced that a child who scores a measly 30 points on their exam must also have 30 point parents. And uh, not to be nitpicky housemaster, but Anya actually scored 31 points, thank you very much. Something that Viz Media's translation took the time to rectify, whereas the original Japanese script in the manga and anime still say 30. But anyways, it's time for the Forger family to overcome the next obstacle in the way of some stampeding animals. While this definitely will test the applicants and their ability to deal with emergencies, this isn't a planned emergency. Much to the shock of the housemaster, these people are in actual danger, but whether it's a test or not, Lloyd still plans to help as many people in need while proving that his family is worthy, even if it means getting dirty again. While Lloyd was considering the fact that he might have to kill this cow with his gun, Yor surprisingly has a more humane idea in mind by doing a pressure point takedown on the raging cow while still somehow looking as murderous as possible. Good on you for not killing it, Yor. This episode would have a hard time making air otherwise. Doesn't stop her family and the rest of the animals from looking at her a little strange, though. In the manga alone, Yor even goes over to Lloyd to explain herself further, while Anya senses the distress coming from the cow and goes to calm it down. Seems like Anya can actually read animal thoughts. That's good to know. Actually, I'd argue that Anya is the real MVP of this event, because not only did she get the cow and his friends to go back home, she did so without even ruining her clothes like her parents did. Of course it is the combined effort of this family that saved the day, and judging by the intense elegance breakdown the headmaster's having, I'd say he agrees. It was so much for him that he just had to see this family himself, and offer his thanks by letting them head off to clean themselves up. 
Oh, Housemaster, you naive goat man, how could you not know these people had another change of clothes on deck? And with that final wardrobe change, we've completely overcome the preliminary challenges, and it's on to the interview itself. And as such, our coverage of Chapter 4 comes to a close here, and we move right along into Chapter 5. And that chapter starts off with one of the Housemasters berating this poor family, a family that Lloyd is keenly listening into. Now, this wasn't shown in the manga, but it is told a little later that Lloyd has been doing this up to this point. As for what he heard from this first family's interview, some of that dialogue has been trimmed a bit, including some extra two cents from the housemaster, as well as a line from the father disappointed at his son who likely just failed. Oh, and some narration boxes introducing us into the chapter. Lloyd understands that this won't be easy and that all the missions he's taken in the past don't compare to the jitters he's getting right now. As far as those previous missions go, I actually spotted an interesting change in the original Japanese text here. See, the anime said Twilight stopped the missile from being launched, but in the manga this was apparently a nuclear warhead. This may or may not have been a censorship change in regards to recent concerns in the world, but I felt it was worth pointing out anyways. Either way, the time is finally here to commence the interview that could very well hold the peace of Westalis and Ostania in the balance. As such, it's fitting that the manga gave us a versus panel of all the players fighting on this playing field. And with the interview officially underway, the first question will fall to Lloyd getting asked how he met his second wife. This question comes from one of the nicer people in this room by the name of Walter Evans. This guy has some interesting changes, not from the manga to the anime, but rather from Shonen Jump to the published version of the manga. See, in the original Shonen Jump airing, this guy used to be 52 years old and belonged to the Marcus Hall dormitory, but now in the manga published release, he's 59 years old and belongs to the Malcolm Hall dormitory. Of course, these changes are also reflected in the anime version, but get used to changes like this, we still have a few more of them to cover. Back to the anime versus manga changes though, it looks like some of Lloyd's lines describing the Housemasters have been omitted and instead placed as text on the screen, possibly to save time. As for Lloyd's response to Walter's question about how he met his wife, we still get those mental pictures of Lloyd having a happy time with his family, but now it's mixed in with some actual events from episode 2. Just like his little speech at Camilla's party, this really shows that his words aren't entirely without meaning, even if they aren't always sincere. You can tell that Yor feels just as thankful to Lloyd as he is to her, but Murdoch Swan, the pompous guy in the middle, seems to detest those feelings all the same. Once again, some info was changed when the Shonen Jump version made the jump to the official release, as the dormitory this guy is in charge of has been changed from Clive Hall to Klein Hall. His age is the same though. Lloyd knows that he needs to steer clear of this guy's distaste for happy families thanks to the buggy placed, but it's definitely hard for an interview that focuses on family values. Oh right, and this is the first time we're actually seeing that bug in the manga. As for the final of these three interviewers, Henry Henderson has also had some of his info changed from Shonen Jump to official release. His age has been changed from 61 to 66, and his designation has been changed from Dormitory 1 Spencer Hall to Dormitory 3 Cecile Hall. All this information change is really interesting. It has to make you wonder what Tatsu Endo has in mind for these three in the future. But without digging deeper into that, let's continue on with the interview where it looks like the Forgers are starting to get caught a little off guard with some unforeseen questions. Worse yet, any answers they give pushes Murdoch to try and strain their family structure even more. Something that really puts Yor on the spot and compels Lloyd to stand up for her. Just like Murdoch wanted, emotions are starting to run a little high and Anya knowing what his agenda is feels it's on her to make sure that this guy doesn't stir the pot any more than necessary. And she's doing an okay job at answering the questions presented to her, even if she did flub some of her verbs along the way. What really sent things in a different direction though is when she started reading Lloyd's mind at the absolute worst moment possible, leading to some interesting misunderstandings all around. I think it's important that we give Anya some props here though. She's definitely younger than all the other candidates here, and even then, doing any sort of interview process for an establishment at the top of the food chain with everything on the line isn't something so easy to be composed for all throughout. One question she didn't have any trouble answering though is how she would score her parents on the parental scale, giving them both a perfect 100 points. This is something that, in my mind, really sealed the familial bond between these three, and they really felt something when she said this. It's also something that made Murdoch the asswipe ask one of the most underhanded questions of all time for a previous orphan. In the manga alone, he even had the gall to call this improvisation. Not only is this inappropriate for an interview, but it's a topic that never should have been brought up at all, and it obviously 
hits a sore spot in Anya's past. Yor and Lloyd both know how important this interview is, but it doesn't excuse making light of Anya's feelings for personal satisfaction. It's a horrible concept, one that Lloyd was hoping he could endure, but it's just too much for any parent to bear, whether they're related by blood or not. While Lloyd might have been able to play off this table punch as just killing a mosquito, his feelings are on full display at this point, and for the first time, Operation Strix wasn't as important to him as getting his family out of this hostile environment. His morals and values are on full display at this point, and clearly his leaving words left an imprint on the respectable Henderson because it compelled him to leave an imprint of his own on Murdoch's face. Well done, Henderson. For this move, you've earned my unbridled respect. With a guy like Murdoch around, the Foragers were limited in that interview. Even though they acquired the respect of the other two housemasters, it doesn't stop the whole Forger family from feeling down about the whole thing afterwards. It's really quite ironic that the interview should have been what kept them as a family together, but instead proved to be a battle ground seeking to tear families apart with irredeemable comments. True, they haven't been together long, but I feel this whole event made them want to stay with each other just a little bit longer. Those feelings aren't held together by blood, but by admiration, values, and appreciation for being in each other's company, something that not all real families can say they have. While there will be setbacks and bad omens, I think they can at least take assurance in knowing that they're all on the same side no matter what. This was definitely a different sort of episode compared to the last one. It housed a crazy amount of dialogue across multiple different versions that needed to be compared, and while I might not be able to catch every single change, I still hope you enjoyed the video nonetheless. If you really did like the video, then before you leave, make sure to give the video a like and share it with a friend. And hey, also get subscribed for more Spy X Family comparison content. These videos take quite a lot to produce, so check me out on Patreon if you want to give me some extra support. Anything given will be highly appreciated. Well, that's it for me. As always, I hope you all have a fantastic day. This is Registry, signing off.